Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I hope you've been enjoying this series so far where we're kind of taking a deep dive into these dungeons and looking at all the skips and various techniques in order to help you complete them in time. Today we're looking at a King's Rest 19, which as many of you may know, there aren't a whole lot of skips per se, but there's some good stuff you can do with Reaping to really help you out with your timing and, and to save those valuable seconds. Like this skip that we do right at the beginning, straight out of the gate, it's, it's nice, a rogue isn't massively, massively needed on this on this type of key, but this is a tyrannical key, so keep that in mind. Here we are in the first boss room, and it's quite quite vital, I would say, to actually take the pack on the left here first, instead of this pack on the right. I see a lot of groups go for the group on the right first, but if you can pull them both together, that's perfect, but uh, not a lot of people can. The only thing you want to watch out for here is the Witch Doctor, and making sure that you're getting those Shadow Bolt volleys interrupted. The reason you want to pull this group on the left first is because these Shadow Fiends with their pathing can be really awkward, and if it's a Bursting Week or um, a Bolstering Week, if you kill those mobs incorrectly, it can be just a real pain in the ass. If you have a Mass Rue or something like that, it's really, Quite nice you can lock him in place until you're ready to kill him here we just vortex and we just burn him down with the, some of the range so what's nice about shrouding at the beginning of this dungeon is that your first reaping is going to be fully contained within this room which means that no previous you don't have to wait for any previous mobs to run to you and stack up first or anything like that this first boss is going to be the real pain the only thing you need to kind of plan ahead here with your group is making sure that you're stacking all of these these goopy goos, these spit golds at the back of the room, normally in this kind of uh, balcony area, that's where most people leave them. And then if you have a range, just DPS them down, or if you've got mass and tangle, whatever kind of suits you best. But the tighter pack that these can be, the better. Always use a defensive as well if you can when you get the spit gold on you. It does a lot of damage, especially at the higher level. I'd say the most fundamental skip in this dungeon is going to be this first mob on the bridge. And you'll see why this shroud is so fundamental and has a ripple effect for the rest of the dungeon. But for now, let's just focus on the second boss room, which is nice and easy. Kill the blobs in one big pull, if your tank can handle it. And then kill the two golems in one separate pull. Nice and easy. Of course, if it's bolstering or bursting, you probably don't want to kill all the blobs at the exact same time, but just be smart with it and you'll be fine. And then continue onward with uh, just pulling the boss with the reaping. It, um, if you if you have the DPS and the healing able to do it, which you should, even on Tyrannical, you got Bloodlust and everything, you, you know, as long as you got a good tank and healer, you should be fine. Um, this boss, again, nothing really too fancy. The only thing I would mention is that if you have Shadow Meld or Feign Death or anything, when you see this Drain Fluid come through, if you do just Shadow Meld, Feign Death there, anything, Vanish, whatever you've got, uh, it will remove that Drain Fluids and kind of really just helps your healer out quite a lot. Apart from that, you got to play the Entomb out and uh, just avoid the fires. Okay, now the way King's Rest seems to go is that the only really time I see King's Rest messing up is from this point onwards. I don't really have a whole lot of advice. This dungeon's weird, right? There's no skips, there's nothing really that major um, that you can do apart from just playing well and knowing what to interrupt, what not to interrupt, when to use your defensives. Uh, and in this area, the only things that I'd be kind of cautious of or cautious of is as a healer, look out for your tank when they've got the the severed blade on the you know the axe wound that occurs from the berserker, um, and apart from that, just kill the totems and interrupt any of the spellcasters. Watch for hex unless you're a feral druid, then you don't have to. It's fine. Um, and apart from that, you know, just play smart. Make sure you're getting through a lot of your offensive cooldowns as well as defensive cooldowns because you got a, like probably like six or seven minutes on this bridge. So um, you know, just make sure you pumping out as much dps as possible okay and so by this point of the dungeon we're heading to the third boss with 15 minutes left and 99 percent of our trash so zol is going to or shadow of zol is going to be the last reaping of the dungeon and we'll talk more about that later focusing on this third boss i mean the only real bad boss is the axe thrower the other two don't really matter too much as long as you um interrupt zanzol's uh or zanazol's poison that should be fine I would also note that you can um, shadow meld the charge that the uh, the melee boss does. You can cycle that round until you it lands on a party member with like say for example um, ice block and can actually just remove the the damage, which is nice but not vital. We actually end up having quite a bit of trouble on the shadow of Zol at the end, which is weird because it's a tyrannical week. But you know what? We get through it. It's fine. 
Uh, once Zol dies, he's going to proc the last reaping. Now, we are unfortunately in a very, very gross position. So we can't, we kind of just have to kill the reaping. What you can do is you can actually just move down towards the boss and then, uh, and then shadow meld. And you can actually just completely drop off the reaping. Now, even if you have to kill this reaping, I would still suggest pulling it with the last boss because the reaping itself is going to take so long for all the mobs to get to you that you will have stabilized on the boss. Um, you should be able to kill them, you know, a few mobs at a time. It's not going to be, you know, a mass, mass pileup of, of reaping mobs. So okay, and then you're finally on the last boss. You kind of have to get lucky on the third boss with which time the axe uh, thrower comes up because that's the boss you want to bloodlust on. So if you get it first, that's even better. You mean means you get your bloodlust up earlier for this last boss. If not, you kind of, uh, if it happens at the end, you kind of screwed a little bit, which is kind of just unlucky, but you know, it is what it is. Apart from that, on this last boss, just, just kill the boss, honestly. If you've survived this far, there's no tips I can give you on this last boss. Watch out for the Quaking Leap, use cooldowns, um, kill the dinosaurs as quickly as possible, uh, press your buttons, and uh, don't die. There you go. Dungeon complete. I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. Um, now, chances are, by the time you guys are actually watching this, I'm probably streaming right now. So I think you should definitely come over and check out the channel at twitch.tv slash slat. I'll be probably playing my Feral Druid at this point. Um, so you guys should definitely come check it out. But apart from that, I hope you've been enjoying this video series. Um, is there anything I've missed in this dungeon? Is there anything here that you think um, I probably should have included? Something I should have brought up that, or something that works for you that maybe I haven't mentioned? Please leave it down in the comment section or get in the Discord or private message me or you know tweet at me, whatever's best for you to kind of just share your thoughts about this video. But um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, look forward to the next one.